to the hot spot. Kennedy flies. Kennedy answers the Eagles fans' prayers. Seen some great games this year. I'm not sure it's been better than that. Hello, I'm Damian Barrett. Welcome to Access All Areas, brought to you by Sportsbet. Matthew Lloyd, as always, is with me. And Lordo, round nine was not good for Collingwood. No, it wasn't, Damo, and they've got a few excuses. They've lost their best defender, in my opinion, Jeremy Howe. Dugowie going out has really hurt them in attack, and then Scotty Penelbury didn't play. But it's their inability to score, which is causing a lot of pressure on the defence at Collingwood and the team. We see these are some late moments in the game. You, know, you thought, you know, at three-quarter time, they went in front, they'd kicked a couple of late goals, but Fremantle were just harder and tougher, David. That was a horrible decision from the umpire, how that was paid deliberate against Jamie Elliott, but they outworked them. And yep. we'll talk about Sarong shortly and Brayshaw and Fife and Chera and all that. They were just tougher through that midfield. They were. They gave themselves a chance. Yeah. They, they only lost by, by a narrow margin and with a goal after the siren making the margin long, more than it would have otherwise been, Lord Oak. But... Uh, You've been long critical yeah. now mm. of the Pies forward setup. Yeah. yeah, I have been. I just don't think that uh, yeah, when you're scoring 50 points a game and you're relying on Darcy Moore and, and Braden Maynard and these guys to get you through, you're not going to win too many games. You mm. need to score at least 12, 13 goals to win a game of footy across the board of a season. They just don't do it. Yep. And suddenly yeah, they lose a game to Fremantle, which they're going to be bottom four Fremantle. So, you know, understand losing the West Coast in the fashion they did, although they shouldn't concede that many goals, but to lose to the Dockers, that puts their finals chances, not yeah. a premiership chance, but their final chances. Just chance. their finals chances. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Well, yeah. they're four and a half wins mm. after the, the nine games, yeah. and they had a torrid week, yeah. not for the first mm. time off-field, did they, with uh, Nathan Buckley yeah. himself and his own assistant coach, Brenton Sanderson, um, incurring the wrath of the AFL system, a fine for yeah. a COVID-19 protocol breach. And, look, he explained himself really well post-match. Yeah. It couldn't have helped in the lead-up to that game, what he did, and, and it was simply wrong what he did. Yeah, it was wrong, and, and I think that uh, you think Nathan Buckley's such a good man and all those sorts of things, but how does he make an error like that? You know, you understand that you can go and play with someone from your team, but to go and play with an outsider, I just think they just don't help themselves, Collingwood. Steel side bottom, I was really critical of Steel mm. side bottom because if he played against Essendon, I think they win. And the next game after he gets suspended, they lose. So there's four points gone. Nathan Buckley, he was in quarantine for 24 hours, so he wouldn't be chatting to players. Mm. I'm not sure what happened with training, what happens with team meetings. Then he turns up on game day, suddenly he sits on the bench and he's trying to speak to his players. Is there a cumulative effect of, of the off-field problems at Collingwood impacting yeah. now, in I your think, eyes? Yeah, too many distractions, yeah. don't they? Just too many distractions. Are the distractions also in your eyes? Yeah. Um, is there a line drawn to the distractions created by their own president, Eddie Maguire? Twice now, he's yeah. made... Comments that have mm. been played out as hypocritical, mm. given he made comments before side bottom transgressed. Yeah. He made comments on the day Nathan Buckley transgressed yeah. without him knowing he transgressed in saying that people who infringe mm. from these hubs should be yeah. sent home. Yeah, and he couldn't have believed that it happened to him again. Yeah. He went hard on side bottom the day before and that happens and then hard again should be sent home and Nathan Buckley does it. What's your thoughts on that, Damien? Yeah, I think it's more, that's where it's tough being the role that he's in. I know he, mm. he loves his club and he loves being the president, but uh, these things that can be come back, thrown in your face. Well, it's twice now where he's happy yeah. to have strong opinions mm. on a competition matter until mm. the person mm. offending is yeah. a Collingwood person mm. and it's a it's hypocrisy. Yeah. Lord, just at selection too, interestingly mm. enough, Jordan Roughhead yeah. was left out of this team. It left uh, Mark Keane yeah. Ultimately, one out too often. Yeah, I thought I was staggered. First game of Mark I Keane. was absolutely staggered. And, you know, Mark Keane hopefully has a good career. But uh, Matty Tavenar would not kick four goals, in my opinion, in a tight game like this on Jordan Ruffhead. Yet Nathan Buckley left him out. So this one staggered me. This one. No, poor Darcy Moore. He's tr he was trying to play on two players yep. yesterday. This one, hands in the back. That was just a player who just didn't have a good feel of the game late in the game. The pressure got to him. And Tavenar, four goals in a tight game. Yeah. That, that really hurt them. I was really surprised. I think it was a poor decision by Nathan Buckley. We need to give full credit yeah. for Justin Longmuir's coaching, yeah. don't we? I mean, he, he coached well throughout the game, yeah. but he brought four players forward. Sean Darcy was moved forward yeah. to even stretch Darcy more even further, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he did really well. He yeah. understood that Collingwood don't score well. Um, Brody Grundy, another issue. All the tap-outs, he'd be like Max Gorn. Get mm. nothing for them. They'll smash through the yep. clearances. He did coach well yesterday. You're Longmuir. a keen student yeah. of the uh, young kids coming through. Last year you were talking about Caleb Strong before the Dockers yeah. took him high in the draft. And he's putting together a nice little patch of work right now. He is. And you know what? A lot of players 
disappointed when they have to go to Fremantle because of you know, how far it is away from home. But Caleb Sarong has been a boarder at uh, Geelong Grammar for a while, moved away from home. You can see the joy he's got playing. Mm. Not many in their you know, first season of footy can be best on ground. And he took it to Taylor Adams and Trelaw and all these players. And I think he was the best man on the ground. The toughness. Do you? Yeah, yeah, he pushed Jack Crisp off the ball there. So he's just got to work toughness about him and some class. And I think what they're doing well at Fremantle is Nathan Fife was five or bust. Mm. Now Brayshaw's getting best on ground. Yep. Uh, Sarong gets the best on Chera. ground. Chera's going yep. well, which is fantastic. And there was no Walters up. yesterday. As well, yeah. Uh, the Giants mm. got a win against the Gold Coast Suns. It wasn't their best performance of the year, but uh, the way they're going, just doing so is mm. enough, isn't it? Um, we had the injury issues, yeah. though, to Toby Green and also Matt DeBoer to come out of it. Yeah, just wanted to make the point on uh, the importance of Timmy Taranto. Timmy Taranto... May not be getting huge numbers in statistics, but since he's come back, he's made other players better. And I yep. think Stephen Canelio has been a better player. He had 20 disposals, kicked the goal, five tackles, played with more energy. And Josh Kelly, you know, I know his future's been spoken about a bit, but he's playing with more of a hunger and a passion in the last few weeks. 28 disposals yesterday and a goal as well. We had noticed that Kelly's input mm. had dropped off, Lloyd, yeah. but, but to his credit, as you just pointed mm. out, his past month has been good. And he's doing it on the inside and the outside. That's what I love about Josh yep. Kelly. He's tough and he's doing it in, in the outside. So I think that collectively they're playing better as a midfield group over the last couple yep. of weeks. Roll the dice with a, a clearly banged up Toby mm. Green. He's missed a couple of games being rested. But this happened uh, yesterday, Lordo, and uh, I'm just a big subscriber and there's no such thing as a minor hamstring, no. particularly for someone who's had a problem of soft tissue, and, and he has. And the other problem they've got too is a, a man who was so crucial to what they ended up doing last year in Matt DeBoer, the, the run with player pinged one as well. Yeah. They're going to be without them for a number of weeks. It must be so frustrating for Leon Cameron because he cops a lot of heat, Leon, but I think the medical team at the GWS Giants have let him down yep. also. I think that uh, they have too many injuries at critical times. Last yep. year, you know, Josh Kelly was hurt. Didn't have a great final series. Lockie Whitfield couldn't help that. Mm. Uh, you know, Toby Green, suspensions. Um, uh, who else? Cornelio did his knee. Yep. Haynes had his throat. Plus a lot of soft tissues, which I haven't mentioned. So they never seem to get luck with injuries of Giants. Yep. Have we seen this before with the Suns? Startling starts, mm. but an equally uh, problematic matches to follow. Yeah, and how long can we say they're young for? Where they can start well, 3-2, 3-1, 3-1. 1-16 in 18, 0 and 18 2019, and now they're 1-4. and four. So their next three weeks, they've got St Kilda, Essendon and Richmond. They have to at least win one or two of them. They mm. cannot let the rot continue because yeah. I think that's a loser's mentality right. up there that just keeps setting in. And you know, I know they lost Rao, but Noah Anderson and Rankin and King, they have to understand what winning is and they can't just fall into another lull yep. to finish this season. I thought we saw one of the games of the year. West Coast Eagles mm. getting over the line a, a against the Cats. So to me, Lord, the, the Cats lost it, nothing but the four premiership points, but yeah. it's the, uh, the old stalwarts for the Eagles, and you've already seen a couple in this uh, package here who, who got the job done. So many big game players, and you look at some of these edits, Shuey's involved. You, know, you see there, Shuey, the pressure, Dom Shee, big-time player. Tim Kelly's become a big-time player. Josh Kennedy, he's a Hall of Famer. I just love watching Josh Kennedy play the game, the way he plays his football. Shuey involved again. Cripps should have been out of bounds. Jack Darling, I know he's let himself down, but getting better yep. by the year. So he's still playing his role. Great thing about the West Coast Eagles. They have players who know what it's like to win big-time football. Yeah, Nick, Nick Natanui, we've, yes. talked about him, uh, we've talked about him regularly on this program already this year. Last week we lauded his efforts. Uh, it was instrumental in, in the set play of mm. 2020, without a doubt. We're going to go behind the scenes in a moment, but have a look what Josh Kennedy did there, Lauder. So we talk about experienced players, and, and inexperienced teams don't do this. So we've got the behind-the-goals vision. Uh, only AFL... Dot com though you has this vision. So there's on the right hand, the circle is Josh Kennedy and Harry Taylor. The square behind that is how disciplined the forwards and the midfielders are to say, this is a utopia. This is a space we want to leave open. Tim Kelly doesn't even race into the space. They have left this open. So, so this Kennedy clearly is the set through. play they yes. said it was. And it might not be just for Kennedy, but it's for a player to right. charge through at different points in time. But at this stage, it's Josh Kennedy. And the discipline, as I said, for all the surrounding players to do this was sensational. They were down at this point. Kennedy runs into that space that they left. was sensational. So a Geelong player should have worked his way into that. Yep. Uh, but eight points down at that stage. But the discipline of West Coast to stay out and all be dangerous at the same time while staying out of that space was mm. magnificent. And the speed with the big yeah. man uh, took that contest. Let's see what that win by the Eagles has done to the Premiership market with the uh, smooth-looking Nathan Brown of Sportsbet. 
Yeah, thanks, Damo. You're looking good yourself today. West Coast Eagles are flying at the moment. And Josh Kennedy, Nat Newey, Kelly, the combination is going well. And they're into favouritism as of last week for the Premiership market. And they have firmed overnight for the Premiership market. So too have the Tigers. The Valley looks to be Geelong and St Kilda. Both those sides are going well in Geelong up at three-quarter time against the West Coast Eagles. Now, that leads me to the Coleman medal. Speaking about Josh Kennedy, he was $8 last week, into $3, now to $2.25, 11 goals in two weeks, and he looks ready for the Coleman medal. Brownlow medal, it is Lockie Neals to lose through injury at the moment. Would have got another three votes on the weekend. He is flying at the moment. Petrarca is the one who is the closest but would not have voted on the weekend. Melbourne were pretty ordinary, so it's all about Lockie Neal for the Brownlow. Good luck if you're punning on any of this and gamble responsibly. Thank you, Brownie, there from uh, Sportsbet. Uh, Melbourne was very ordinary, according to Brownie. They were actually worse than that. Mm. They, they were woeful with what they dished up against Port Adelaide, and it's a genuine worry now, isn't it? Yeah, and Damon, this was the first uh, pretty much 15, 20 seconds, and I see it's all their energy and their effort was off. So this is a kid playing his first, you know, third or fourth game. And you think, how nice is footy? How easy is <laughs> footy when this happens? But I just look at it. Where, what's McDonald doing? It's a little block, nothing much from Westhoff, but the kid just rolls out there and takes a mark. And no wonder he played so well because his confidence is up nice and early. So with Melbourne, their foot skills are that bad. Their cohesion is that bad. Max Gorn taps it, but nothing happens for it. If their effort isn't going to be there, they don't stand for too much. And that was a pathetic performance on the weekend. Their effort wasn't there and they got their pants mm. pulled down by a seasoned and tough side yep. in Port Adelaide. The president of the yeah. club, Glenn Bartlett in the Herald Sun, used mm. the word insipid yeah. uh, and also said that we don't give out uh, Melbourne jumpers in a, in a mm. Wheaties park. He said that the pride in the whole performance was, was not significant yeah. enough. Um, I was surprised by the comments. Mm. He, he's not in the habit of making yeah. those comments. And I don't know where it leaves him now. Yeah. What does he do next if this now gets really pear-shaped for this club? Well, I didn't mind it. I know as a player I hated it, Damo. Yep. So if I put my players... To, why, Glenn, did you need to say it? You know, why can't you keep that those thoughts internally? But I think they're just sick and tired of it. Right. So I think, you know, they've probably tried the other way where they haven't said anything for so long. But let's put them on notice. Let's put Is the, the coach thing. on notice? Uh, uh, yeah, he needs to be. I think, Despite being re-signed in the off-season? Yes, yes, because I, don't, I think he's lost for answers. I, he seems a confused man. Uh, and I think every you know, we've heard the same messaging in post-match conferences, yep. but nothing changes at Melbourne. And mm. they should beat the Crows by 10 goals, but yeah. we'll wait till they play another good team to see if, he's, if they can improve, but they yep. haven't improved. And this is an issue, Domo. This is the same pace midfield. Oliver the same as Viney, who's the same as Brayshaw, who's the same as Harms. Langdon comes in tough but can't kick the footy. Tomlinson can't get a game. Jones is a similar player. Vandenberg has a crack, Sparrow has a crack, Bennell, Bennell appointed difference, but he's passed his best Harley Bennell. He won't get back to what he was. So you just look at them and mm. say, who's going to leave at the end of the year? So they need to make some hard decisions. And it, it is a Brayshaw or an Oliver or someone needs to leave that really? club to bring in some point of difference to that midfield. That's a big call. Yeah, I think they do need to make some hard decisions and yep. sometimes you need to make that. And you can't give up nothing to get something. Yep. So a, a, an elite player needs to go to change that midfield. It's not what they thought they were going to be after 2018. No, no, they've had the cream of the crop. And I remember looking at it, Jesse Hogan and Brayshaw and Oliver and Petrarca and all these players, but it's net hasn't come to yep. what should have been. Saints arguably should be eight wins, one loss. They're, they're actually uh, six yeah. and three, Lordo. But... They fixed up the Swans in a, in a very dominating way. Yeah, and what they've done, Damo, is they've brought in players that are different. Yep. They've brought in uh, Jones, who breaks the lines, which they never had. To, to your in, point, yeah. which you just used the game. Yeah, Melbourne. exactly yeah. right. Bradley Hill, he's a point. Nick Hind, who just kicked that goal. He's got speed, so they bring him in. And what I've loved about the last two weeks is game in the balance against Port, on the road, they've kicked five goals to zero in the last quarter. Yep. Game on the line, six goals to one v the Swans. So they've got the ultimate belief about themselves that they're fit and they've got a clear game style. And these are the players mm -hmm. who had got the job done for them without making finals in the past three years, yeah. Lordo. Most of them, but certainly from 2019, are still impacting this year, mm -hmm. but they're doing so with the additions of class around yeah, them. Yeah, you see a lot of Geary, Ross, Stephen, those sort of players, but... They'll only take you so far, but now they're being complemented by genuine players who can be all Australians. Mm. I'm talking Jack Steele's been a massive plus, but King, uh, obviously Bradley Hill, Rowan Marshall, uh, Jade Gresham, uh, Hunter Clark, Nick yep. Caulfield. Hine. 
Pine, beautiful yeah. players, the young good players around them. So they've yeah. got a great mix with Brett Ratton who's coaching well. You worry for Matty Nix now, don't you? Mm. Uh, nine games into his coaching career without a win. Now this is normal stuff, I'm assuming, to a point right out at half time. But it's a frustrated man trying to restructure the way his team was playing. And we got an insight as to what he's referring to there with, uh, with a passage of play that came late in the game but just clearly illustrates where this club yeah, is at. He's asking players to shuffle over. You know, that you've got to move. And this doesn't happen. This is, this is poor by Crouch. This is like player. He didn't really want that by Crouch. And poor Talia, as a defender, he's been asked to shift up the ground, expecting forward pressure would be elite. But if it's not elite, this is what happens. I'll, I'll, it's hard to remember a goal being so easy. Three kicks was all that was needed from full back for that goal being kicked. And, you know, that, if they hadn't hit rock bottom, that was it on the weekend. Is Todd Goldstein the all-Australian ruck? Or should he be in the conversation at least? The other three names on that list always get talked mm. about. Nat Nui's numbers never stack up with yeah. his impact, but Gorn and Grundy have been All-Australian in the past mm. two years. Should he be in the Yeah, mix? Oh, definitely. He's, he's like a ruck rover with his numbers, and you see the clearance numbers. So he, he's doing so much, but I think because he's in a poor side, he's not getting the recognition. But Gorn and Grundy, the hit-outs aren't doing enough to, uh, for their team. Nat Nui's last two weeks has been phenomenal, but Goldstein, for his body of work, might just have his nose in front. Yep. The Bombers were really ordinary against mm. the Lions. Now, the Lions are going to fix up a yep. lot of clubs this year. They already have. But it started early and, and did not improve, did it, in the midfield? No. I, we're just more this effort, you know, and you can be decimated in your forward line, but I pause it very, very shortly. And did Merritt want this ball as much as Zorko and Berry did? And I'll say no, because when you watch this vision roll on, he should be smashing in there. And this is a stoppage. He just actually let the player go. And then Paul Redmond on the last line of defence gets burnt. He's got no hope then. No, he's got no hope. Then Lockie Neal. Like, opposition, Merritt's been smashed. Shields been smashed this year. But they let Lockie Neal just run around like he was having a Sunday stroll. Hmm. So Essendon's being critiqued at the moment. Where's their ruthless edge? What's ruthless about the Essendon Football Club? Yes, you were decimated, but did you make it tough? for Brisbane on the weekend. No, you didn't. And Essendon supporters are frustrated, Damo, saying, how many years do we have to accept this mediocrity from a team that... So we... can you see this season already slipping uh, away? Well, I think the forward line is a mess because, you know, no Stringer, no Danaher, no Fantasia, but Danaher and Fantasia have been injured for two years. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I just didn't like how... I, I didn't see anything to really challenge... Brisbane. I didn't know what they were trying to do. They almost conceded the game yeah, before. Yeah, they would chip the ball around, yep. didn't look like scoring, and that's a frustration. Yep. Hawthorne was good. Yeah. It must be said, they were 31 points down against Carlton. Stuck to a, a different game style, Lord but it was, a, it was a free running one. They took the game on, they took risks, mm. they were rewarded, they retrieved that deficit pretty quickly, and then controlled the game. Oh, it was sensational, Damo, and, and I've been as hard on Hawthorne as anyone, but. You see change. We saw change and I saw a smile on the face of Bruce and yeah. Gunston and Impey because finally they, they, the game was being played the way forwards want it to be played. Tom Mitchell would normally retreat back here. But he yep. says, no, I'm going to go quickly. And with a kick a like kick. that, it yep. opens up the inside 50s for your forward line. So, so well so, done, So m- mindset as much as what happened yeah, during the game. And, and I asked Isaac Smith about it over the weekend in a radio interview. He said, we've been trying... But it just hasn't happened and yep. finally it clicked I for think. us. So well done, Hawthorne. It was brilliant. Yep. T- the Tigers are doing more yeah. than they need to do right now to defend a, a premiership. They've uh, added players to their mix, Lordo. And just have a look there if you can. Just identify the ones who are missing from a, a premiership team alongside or against the ones currently playing. Yeah. How's it play that, out? that was a brilliant win. Nine players out from their premiership. I want Hawley back in, Vloston, Asprey, Edwards, and Prestia. So I think Caddy's in trouble, Rioli's in trouble, Nan Curvis is in trouble, Ellis have moved on. Yep. And I think Higgins stays in. Bolter has been a star at centre half back. Child I'd have in front of Nan Curvis. Sydney Stack, I'd try and keep in. And Rioli's got more talent than Arts, but Rioli isn't playing with the effort that Arts is. So I think Arts, for his pressure, pressure, which Richmond love, mm. keeps his spot in front of Rioli at the moment. Well, the goings-on in the Sydney Swans coaching mm. box are, are nearly as must-watch as, <laughs> as what goes on on the field. You, you've brought this to our attention yeah. already this year. John Longmire and Dean Cox have a special relationship. <laughs> he left at the right time. He, I think his ear just couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> and the poor guy on the way out, he's hit his head on a sprinkler head. And, and uh, look at the support he gets here from uh, support, Stevie Johnson. Look. Johnson and McVeigh, they, they've ducked cover for a year, for the whole year. Poor Dean Cox has copped it, and all they do is laugh and joke that... John uh, Blakey missed it. <laughs> ...that Dean Cox has hit his head there. It's must-watch that, yeah. uh, that story in the uh, Swans box. Lord, thanks, as always, thanks, on Access All Areas. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next Monday.